Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, this would be part six, I guess, of the shaper assembly in the <laughs> whole rebuild process. This time we get the uh, clapper box assembly together and on the machine, uh, as well as get the uh, table mechanism together between the X and Y axes and the table itself. Um, we got quite a bit done today. It's My workbench is starting to look more empty, which is awesome. Uh, long way to go yet. Number of parts that we still have to make or uh, repair, uh, but it's, it's coming. It's slowly coming. Uh, I got a few little packages this week, which is kind of fun. Um, first off, the first one th here is, uh, that I'll mention is uh, from uh, Uchel Kim in uh, Washington there. Woods Creek Workshop. He sent me some stickers. And uh, he actually sent me two of each of these. And what I do is, anytime I get multiples, I share them with my friend Eldon, who's a hobby machinist in the neighborhood here, and become a good friend of mine as well. And we help each other out with a number of different projects and ideas and things. So, Uchel, I gave him the other set, but uh, these will definitely go on the sticker board. Check out his channel. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a new channel here as well. He's got a really cool way of doing it. I, I like, because um, every one of us has a different sort of voice, different way of putting things. I like how he does things. It's kind of fun. So, thanks again, Uchel. As well, um, I got other stickers in the mail from Vern, uh, Mature Patriot. Uh, again, he, well, he sent a couple nice cards as well as a couple of his stickers. Uh, again, Eldon got the extra sticker here from, the, from this one. Um, I'll be putting this one up on the board as well. So, uh, Vern's actually uh, uh, on the mend right now. He you know, had a bit of a scare a little while ago, a health scare. Um, Anyway, it's going to take him a little bit to get back up to his speed where he was at, but he's got some cool stuff on his channel, so link to his channel in the description below as well. Go check him out. And finally, uh, Adrian from AIDS Workshop in over in Wales in the UK. Um, <laughs> it was funny, I'd mentioned a while back that uh, this tap and die set that I have for this uh, machine, because I, I wound up picking up a, you know, it's import. I know it came from England, but it was imported to England before it was imported to Canada. And uh, I know they're carbon steel taps. You can't get high speed for the price I paid for that. And uh, so I get this little email the other day from uh, from Adrian, and he says, "Yeah, watch your mailbox." So sure enough, got this little package in the mail here, and yeah, from the from the UK. Gotta love the you know the Royal Mail. You have some interesting stamps and uh, signs and stuff. It's a stack of uh, used, well, they're used Whitworth uh, taps, but they're all in good shape and very usable. So, for example, this one here. Oh man, yeah, that one's in nice shape. That's actually, looks like a typical plug style, the, the medium one. Yeah, and uh, 5 16 BSW, Warrior brand. Most of these I've seen uh, are something like, a, you know, like this one here is, I'm not, Oh, that one doesn't really have much for marking. It's all faded. But it's nice and heavy, so... Uh, Presto. There we go. Presto half-inch BSW, and that's in... Oh, that's in very nice shape. So, I mean, it's... You sent me a small package of these. I mean, that... <laughs> that's awesome. So, thank you very much, Adrian. I, I really appreciate you doing this for me. Um, I've gotten uh, some of the fasteners already made. Uh, I may have to make a few more. I'll have to see as far as some more nuts, that sort of thing. So even then, if I ever have to tap the casting or you know make other stuff to go with this machine, or if I ever have to work on an old MGB, I got the you know, some of the tools I need. So thank you very much. Thank you for thinking of me, Aid. Now the time has come to put the tool head together. Uh, I want to put it together and then install it as a unit onto the RAM. So to start with, we start with our tool head swivel base here, because uh, it swivels inside the ram on this axis here. Everything's going to be done from this direction, so I happen to have this chunk of block here. Uh, again, grabbed it out of a scrap metal bin somewhere, and it's been CNC'd, and it's nice and clean. We can set that there. Uh, now, this is actually the direction that faces the operator. It's just all this is normally hidden by the um, rest of the machinery. Next step is we're going to have to put the tool slide on. Now, we pulled the gib out of it in order to uh, work on it. Here's our tool slide gib. Give it a wipe. Look at the angle of it. That looks about right. And there's a little locating pin in here as well. A little locating pin hole in the gib. We'll slide that in place. Yeah, make sure it seats down. That's what these little screws are for. Before it goes in, 
I'm going to give it just a just a light smear of grease. The next step is uh, we're going to have to put our uh, <clears throat> tool slide screw, our vertical screw in. Let's put a little bit of grease on this journal here. Put the nuts on. And then spin it down. It's a jam nut system here to uh, hold it up against the, uh, hold the lead screw here up against the end. I want it to be, you know, able to be turned easily, but I also don't want a huge amount of backlash in this little uh, end portion here. <coughs> now, 13 16 is pretty close to this. Otherwise, the other one's a 7 16 BSW. All right. That's a little on the snug side. So we'll take the top one and move it toward the bottom one a little bit more there we go that actually feels pretty good so nice thing about a jam nut system like this is that you can just nudge it either way just a little bit by depending on which uh, which nut you turn because if I turn it this one clockwise or you know clockwise tightening that way that gives me a bit of slack. Otherwise, if I had the correct tension, I could take that one and hold it and move that one that way. I actually, I like how they did that one. <clears throat> now we'll grease up our uh, lead screw here. Make sure a little bit on there. Now we can slide this together. Have to make sure that our screw matches up. That's where it goes. It, the first thread or two in there was sticky, and I kind of expected that because it was a little bit difficult to scratch the paint out of it. Well, I guess we'll have to flip it over and assemble it, this portion this side. There. Close enough. Now this is where these little screws come in. They are they are there to set the tension on the gib. That little gib strip we already put in. There I can feel a little bit of resistance there. So there's snug, quarter turn back, lock the lock nut. We'll have to see later as far as how much actual play we have. All the gibs on this machinery are going to have to be played with over time just to make sure that they're set right. So we've got our clapper box, here's our clapper block. And we now need the clapper box pin. For this one here, we're going to use a little bit of machine oil. And again, it won't take a whole lot, just enough to get going. There we go. There. So now that that's in place, I can finish tapping it in. There's our clapper block. In the clapper box, we have one socket head cap screw. It goes in there. We'll get him started. There's that you in place there. And then this bolt here is what this is what 
uh, clamps the uh, clapper box in whatever angle you need, <clears throat> however you set it. Now we're just going to go straight up and down for now in line just because, well, we don't really, we're not really cutting anything yet. I'm just going to lightly snug that. We don't need to go super tight simply because of the fact that we're not, again, we're not cutting with it yet. So, so there we go. Now, uh, next step is we don't want this pin for the clapper block coming out. So at this point, this little uh, flathead set screw gets put into this side. Now, as far as the, as far as the handle and the dial, this will need a little bit of work further down the road. The dial itself is in nice shape still. However, it's missing a little setting screw to, so that when you, you can turn it and then snug it down again. Um, I don't know what thread that is, and it's probably British Association of some type if I had to make a guess. The thing is, I have a set of British Association taps somewhere between here and who knows where on eBay. I've been, it's about two weeks overdue for delivery. Um, when I get my BA uh, th uh, tap and die set, uh, I'll make up a new, um, probably brass, little uh, thumb screw to use in here. In the meantime, we're just going to have to slide it on as it sits. Next up is the knob. The knob has seen better days. The one end's broken off of it. Again, this part here, I'm just going to put on for now. Um, at some point down the road, I'll probably either repair or remake this. But for the time being, I just want to make the machine run. There's that. And then this little nut holds the operating knob on top. There's no key or locating um, device on that, uh, on the handle here. And I didn't have one from the factory. I'm not sure if I'm going to bother putting one on. We'll see. So, otherwise, there's our, uh, there's our clapper box assembled. Now all we need to do is uh, slide it onto the machine. Before installing it, I've brought the ram out to the front of this travel. Well, basically the front of the casting anyway. Pinky's small enough, I can get it in there. I've already cleaned these out with a little bit of a, a little wire uh, brush. These bores, just making sure I'm not going to catch any sharp spots in there. Yes, I know there are comments about never stick your finger in certain places where you wouldn't otherwise do other things. But again, like I say, I know what's in there. There we go. Clapper box. Oh, that's so much easier getting in than it was getting out, I tell you. Um, now, this pin here. Um, this pin needed some help. Uh, put a picture up of what it looked like before. Uh, <laughs> needed to be cleaned up. I cleaned up the journals and stuff on the lathe with some Scotch-Brite and uh, then I, I used some time with the manual milling machine, aka file, and uh, made, the, uh, made the contour clean again. To get this in to, the, or to get this uh, pin, lock pin into the housing here, it won't go right now. You actually have to rotate your clapper box upside down before it'll go in. There. So now it can spin all around all at once. We can bring our clapper box up and at a certain point when you bring it around, bring this pin around to the right for example, lock it. Our, uh, the angle of our tool holder gets locked. It's a cam locking system, right? Now to locate the uh, pin in the bore here, so it doesn't slide too far either way, there's this little pin with the lock nut, and it goes in, well, ha, okay. It goes in this groove here, right there. Now I don't want it to go too far down because I don't want it to bind on the bolt. They're bind on our lock, our, our lock cam. But that should be good there. Right there, it says it's zero. Lock it. There we go. <clears throat> there is one more. 
don't know if you can see it from there. I'm going to get this, get the head out of the way. There's one more little hole right here. And I believe that is so you can actually lock the, uh, the actual pin itself. There's a bit of marking underneath there. That bolt was missing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one later, uh, make it British, uh, what were threaded again. Uh, you've seen me make bolts. I'll make another one just to fit that. It's 5 16 uh, Whitworth, and we'll, uh, I'll add that later. You don't need to see me make every fastener. Just I just want to show you the important ones. But this wrench here is, I'm just using my ratchet, and for those of you old enough to remember distributor wrenches, the ones with the sort of funky curves and whatever, so you could loosen the distributor, a hold down clamp, and then set your timing. Yes, I am old enough. I've done lots of distributors. Um, what that is, that's just a little union between the top and the bottom chunk. It's a female 3 8 on both sides. And I just use my 3 8 to half inch adapter. These are half inch squares. And works like a hot darn. Next order of business is assembling the table. Uh, the, well, basically the table uh, drive and ways and whatever assembly. Um, this is the side that actually faces the machine. These uh, slots here with these two um, tabs, and there's a set of gibs here, or there's a gib here, I should say, with uh, two adjustment screws. That's what goes onto the machine onto the vertical ways uh, for, the, uh, for the height adjustment, elevation. If you flip it over, you can see inside here, try to get a good view, right here, is a little gear, uh, well, helical gear for um, uh, allowing the uh, shaft from the side to turn and, you know, turn it, the uh, lead screw in here, or the lead screw nut, which then raises and lowers the table. Uh, this is the front face that faces the operator. What's interesting is if you look on this casting here, there's a hole there, 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 and there. They're all angled down, and uh, those are oil feed holes for when you're going to lube up the machine to operate it. So that's part of the ma daily maintenance schedule if you're running this thing. This end here has the taper pin. And I just want to make sure I have the correct direction so I can remember. Yeah, it's definitely this way. Yeah, definitely that way. And I'm not sure if it's in the center. It doesn't, oh, ha! And no, that's not drilled in the center of the shaft. I can see it right there. So. Put it up, will be the wide side. Slide you in, slide you in, there. Up will be the wide side, there. Just so it doesn't run dry. Sad to say again, it's not a new machine by any stretch. So the, uh, these helical gears here for the table height uh, adjustment do have a bit of dingage and scourge in them if that could be used as a term, dingage and scourge. I noticed that the uh, hole is drilled slightly off center this way as well, just like the other one, just like on the shaft. There we are, now we're aligned. Take our taper pin, in it goes. Groovy, there we are. This guy here, this is the uh, front face of it that the box uh, with the table mounts on with these three bolts. So we'll take these up just to make it a little easier to work with. As I say, I just I have a really hard time putting together mechanical components without some form of lubrication on them. Now I wonder if I can actually get this in, if I can tilt the box in, or the box mount. I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work, worst case scenario, I edit it out. Or I'll leave it in so you can laugh at me. I don't, I'm good either way. Now because I have been accused of being lazy, well, and admittedly, I'm just going to use the little half inch drive on the end of a bit of an adapter on the end of a cordless drill.
Haha, uh -huh. that seems to work okay. Make sure the way areas are clean. And then that there needs to go into this hole in the front. Oh, is it going to go? Is it going to go? Come on. Oh, there we are. That's on. So now, take our gibs from this bottom gib strip. It can go in. Now, I'm sure for some of you who, you know, rebuild machinery on a regular basis or for a living, what I'm doing here probably seems like kindergarten. But this is the first piece of actual metalwork machinery I've taken down this far, that's for sure. Here, move it over so you can see what I'm doing. Now it's time for the nuts on the end of the lead screw. <coughs> Now I'll probably have to readjust these over time as you know the machine sort of settles in and this surface did get painted and it wasn't originally so Hold the back side with a uh, the socket. Oh, a little bit of tension. Yep. I think I'll go with that for now. Again, I don't want it too loose, don't want it too tight, but I think I'll go with that. I can just turn it by hand by grabbing it, grabbing it hard. I'll do that. Now that that's in there and working like I like it for the moment, flip this over. Getting heavier for sure. These are what hold it to the hold it to the vertical ways. As I was saying before. We have a gib here. I couldn't get this gib off and I didn't want to break it, so it stayed put. So let's give it a light smear. There we go. So now we can install these, uh, these two uh, adjustment screws for the gibs for the vertical ways. We're going to leave these two tabs off because we have to have them off in order to install the table to the machine. Okay. Protect the surfaces from any of that grunge on the two by fours with some rags. There. The fun thing is now I can use the power feed. Oops. To run our table back and forth. Now it looks like the yeah, how far over can it go? Haha. <laughs> Oops. Suppose before you get too crazy here, this plate here will have to go on the back. Raise it up a bit. There we go. Should have done that to start with, honestly, but got ahead of myself. There. Give for this side, make sure the holes line up. 
little coat of grease on the business side. It should then slide in. Yeah, there we are. All right, well, I guess it is what it is. Put that gib in, the gib screw. So the two there, make sure they're snug. I go until I can see this hole. Now if I do this, we should be able to There we go. Run the table back and forth. There. I think I'm going to hang on to something like this for using as a rapid. Next step is we'll take our elevation lead screw. are rapid so now that the uh, cross slide and elevation assembly is put together we now need to mount this to the shaper body uh, got your pl our plates here and our mounting bolts so we're just about ready to put the whole cross slide and elevation assembly on here. But before we do that, one final thing. There we go. That'll be enough to get it moving anyway. Now the elevation lead screw fits in this little pocket here and it's retained by a little bolt in the bottom here. So here we go. Here's our assembly. Turn it around. Now the reason I pulled those pads off the back is we can now take this and slide it into place. And as long as I'm not crazy with it, it'll sit there. And now I can put the uh, uh, retaining strips on the back and snug them down. We have a little bolt here that goes down in this hole in the bottom and that holds that elevation lead screw in place and keeps it from turning. We don't have to worry as much about the table coming out as it is, you know, it's most of the forces are pushing down. Now we can put the slides on the back. There we go, we have elevation. Now one more thing I want to do before I go to bed is put the table on. Because that is just going to finish the look for now. It's held in place with three of these uh, 7 16 thread bolts. So now theoretically, when I go to cut something, I should be able to just, you know, get it set up, drop that, and that'll then uh, provide some vertical support to the table or to the table from the uh, from the base. For now, I'm just going to slide it up in just to get it out of the way. There we are. The clutch cover has no uh, knob or latch mounted in it yet, but. There we go. All right. 
I like where we're at for the today. That is enough for one day. Well, I mean, I don't know about you all who are watching this whole process on full, but uh, I will admit I'm getting more and more excited as the pieces get off the bench and onto the machine. Uh, again, still got a ways to go and a number of parts to fix or uh, remake because there is no parts catalog to buy for these things. So I'm getting excited more and more looking forward to making chips on this thing. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, even if you haven't subscribed, thanks for coming by. Uh, hope you found it interesting. And uh, yeah, see you all next time.